Let's look at the basics when it comes to developing a hydrograph for a watershed. On the left, we have our watershed, and on the right, we have our hydrograph. Focusing on the watershed, we notice we have that gauging station at the very bottom. This will be the outlet. And also notice we have these incoming tributaries, the small tributaries that feed into the main channel. Now we have a storm event. So rainfall begins. The area closest to the outlet or that gauging station will contribute to runoff first. And as time goes on, the more distant parts of the watershed begin to contribute until eventually the entire watershed will be active. Let's look at this process again on the hydrograph. Notice at the beginning, the flow will rise as more area contributes to the gauging station then it will reach a peak when the entire watershed is generating runoff. Then after the rainfall ends, the watershed slowly drains. But instead of emptying all at once, water stored in the soils and the channel is gradually released, which we see in the recession limp of the hydrograph. Also notice how that base flow shown in gray remains constant for this ideal model. So this represents groundwater that continues to supply the stream even when there's no rainfall. Every civil engineer should have a good conceptual understanding of a hydrograph. The hydrograph allows us to see how the rainfall over the watershed transforms into those peak flows that can cause flooding. And as engineers, we then respond with preventive measures like detention ponds, wetlands, swales, and other innovative infiltration systems that are designed to flatten this peak flow and sustain the base flow. This in the end protects communities from both floods and droughts, especially under changing climate conditions.